For Halloween this year, my son wanted to be a Star Wars Rebel from the game Battlefront. And, uh, you know, who am I to argue? So, any excuse to build Star Wars Blaster, I will take it. So this is the model that I built in SketchUp to 3D print for the blaster. It was designed to be completely um, 3D printed. All of the parts, all of the connections were going to be printed. But there were there, there was one major problem with this, and that was this seam right here. Um, after this was all done, and my son and his cousin were playing with it, they broke it pretty quickly. And it's because there's not really any strength. You can see the the sort of floating tenon that joins the second part of this, that held up, that's much stronger. But actually 3D printing a tenon, it doesn't have a whole lot to hold on to inside of there. Uh, it's not as strong. So this is the second version. And this you can see was built entirely around this long wooden dowel. It's a really thick, it's a one inch wooden dowel. So it's it runs the full length of the blaster. It makes it really strong. I probably would would make it a three quarter inch if I were to do it again, um, just for aesthetic reasons. But this worked out really well, and so it was off to uh, the 3D printing. You can see in the sort of this vent part that there's a lot of support material. That was another problem with the first print. Is I had to dig that material out. Um, which was a little bit problematic, you know, it, it was doable. But there's the first version, and here's the second version. You see how it's all coming together around that, that wooden dowel. Now, just to be clear, as with any 3D printing, I had some misfires as well. A couple pieces that didn't print correctly. I had to do the handle three times, because the, the trigger guard and this piece, you can see, actually, it pulled off the print bed happened to capture this one. Remarkably, the, the rest of the handle still printed. It was skewed, but this was unusable. So that's part of the nature of 3D printing. Um, this printer is a really fantastic printer. I, I just hadn't cleaned the bed in a while, so I think that was my fault more than anything. But putting this together was, was pretty simple some CA glue and I found after the first one definitely to um, wipe that up clean up as you go but it's pretty straightforward all the pieces go together some CA glue and some accelerator to make it fast putting these together is, is fun they go together so quickly um, it's really gratifying after you it takes a couple days to print out all the parts but then you put it together and it goes together in about 15 minutes Although I did not glue the front barrel, um, that part of this on. And I did that so that I could finish it differently. So with it all, with part of it glued up, it was time to finish it. So I started as you should with a primer, uh, a nice filler primer. Now I didn't take a lot of time sanding down some of the ridges from the printing. Again, this was just sort of, this was for my son and especially the second version, Halloween's over, and this is more of just an experiment for my own curiosity. So with primer, I then sprayed uh, a nice black and then masked off areas so I could spray a really shiny chrome silver on a few parts of it. And again, this is really not the best way to just, you know, I should have masked it off a little better. I did to get a little bit of a spillover. But again, for my purposes, this worked fine. It was quick. And then it's time to glue the rest of it together. But you can see why I didn't glue it here because uh, I wanted to get chrome on, on the inside and then that vent goes on the outside. So there's the old version. You can see it was weathered and it's time for weathering on the new version. Weathering is a lot of fun and I'm not, 
I'm not by any means an expert at it. This is a fun process. I actually, I like the way that the first blaster came out. It, it felt like it came out with more scratches. I kind of overdid it on this one. Um, but you can see it's sort of taking acrylic paint, painting on just some of the edges that would get sort of chipped and brushed with normal wear. And then later I take some um, yellow and brown paints and, and paint more as though it's been sort of like through a number of different planets. Again, this is Star Wars, so you get to use your imagination and you have fun saying, oh, maybe this was... Um, this is a blast rifle that's been used on different planets and it's got all this dirt and grime on it. It's easy to get sucked into the little details and not realize that overall you're sort of um, sort of going too far and it's distracting. And that's what happened, I think, on this one. So I, I went, uh, I got too engrossed in little details and, and overall, I think the, it's a little too much. But... It still was fun. It's a lot of fun. Could go back and change it up. Um, for really the the master of weathering is a, a guy named Harrison Cricks from Vulpin Props. If you want to see some amazing props and weathering, and and check out his book on weathering. But this was a lot of fun.